one of the things that I have found is that uh, among the Aboriginal people, uh, sacraments, sacramentals, and it's still very important. And reconciliation at Lexington is very important. Uh, people, boy, almost everybody, I would say, um, celebrates that sacrament. For many in the Aboriginal culture, the process of reconciliation begins with the sweat lodge tradition, an ancient practice that thrives today. For Catholics, both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, who have experienced the sweat lodge, it is an experience of healing and reconciliation that deepens our understanding of the meaning of the sacrament of reconciliation. In any given community, there might be up to 20 or 30 sweat lodges, and every week there's a sweat lodge. Uh, and I'm trying to think of my own uh, relatives, family, uh, community that I grew up in. We used to go to confession every month or so, <laughs> or more often. That hardly happens now, and I'm thinking just the fact that these sweat lodges, which is an emphasis on purification and healing, is happening all over the place, is strong, a feature of First Nations uh, culture, is a reminder to us as Catholics of the importance of confession and reconciliation. For those who might never have an idea of what it could be, it's like having a prayer meeting in a sauna. But not just a prayer meeting that is just like a reflection, but it goes much deeper into a conversion experience. It's another place where the environment is provided for transformation. The water, the heat, the pain, the suffering, all of that allows that transformation to happen. There are red hot stones in a pit and when water gets poured over them, and it's not just water. We use cedar water or cedar tea. And when it touches the stones, the stones are hot enough to make it to be steam. We are there for transformation. We're not there for suffering for the sake of suffering. It's about trying to restore balance in a person's life. It's also about joy. It's also about celebrating. All of those aspects are there in the, in the lodge. It's saying, I'm being cleansed. I'm being forgiven by those that I have, or I ask forgiveness of those that I have hurt and, and, and harmed. And so that's the same thing we're asking in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. For some, the 12-step program relating to addictions as a spiritual problem with spiritual solutions is like a bridge between Catholic theology and First Nations traditions around confession and reconciliation. We have to be quite open to how God works and brings reconciliation in all kinds of different ways. First Nation spirituality it calls for acknowledgement of hurt that's been done and uh, for uh, an apology and for forgiveness to happen. If you put the Sacrament of Reconciliation and the 12-step program side by side, first of all, in, in Reconciliation, we have sorrow or contrition. Well, that's steps one, two, and three. You, know, you come to believe that I need to make some changes in my life. And then the next thing is confession. Well, that's step four and five. You admit to God yourself and another human being the exact nature of your wrongs. And then we have absolution and penance, uh, and that would be steps eight and nine, which is making amends and then you're reconciled. And that would be steps 10, 11, 12, living a new life. What I find the 12-step program adds is step six and seven, which is healing. And as I reflect on that, and I think of First Nations spirituality, I find something fairly similar. The way I grew up, it was you went to confession, you started over again. <laughs> I think we lost sight of the emphasis on healing. And I, I find that's what the 12-step program and First Nations spirituality brings to the church, in a sense, as a uh, a renewed emphasis on the whole dynamic of forgiveness and healing, not just forgiveness over and over again. Mm -hmm.